Berlin Thai say democracy do not get tired of democracy. Welcome to panel discussion three, dreams for the Gambia. I hope you have been following, being attentive to everything that has been discussed here by our different guests and dignitaries. And we are at the last but not the least segment. And as we've been doing from the beginning, we will start from my right and allow the gentleman to introduce himself. Can you introduce yourself to the people? All right, thank you very much. I am Mohamed Krubali, Gambia's first and only visually impaired magistrate and lawyer by profession, and uh, the chairman of Gambia Federation of the Disabled. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you here. And on my left. Um, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Cherno Gay. I am a poet. I'm a law student at the University of the Gambia. I'm also a youth leader, currently um, the coordinator of Our Nation, Our Voice, and the lead advocate for Charter 70. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Wow, that's a lot of things you do for a young man. <laughs> the mother must be very proud of you. <laughs> that's the Gambia we want. Yeah, the Gambia we want. We want. Yes, that's yeah. the Gambia we want. We want Gambia where young men are taking the lead in their respective field, mm -hmm. in their respective careers, mm -hmm. and making a difference uh, so that others can follow suit. Exactly. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. Um, so, panel three, what we discuss is basically the Gambia we want our dreams for the Gambia. My first um, question goes to you, kind sir. In your take, your perspective of things, your thought process of things, what Gambia do you want for yourself, first and foremost, being a person with a PWD, a person with disability, what kind of Gambia do you want for yourself relating to your condition okay thank you very much this is a pertinent question as a, a person with disability um, i noticed that the gambia indeed is a small country though but with uh, actually great potentials with uh, human resources that can actually turn things into positive ones um, as I actually live in the Gambia, and as I have traveled um, far and wide across the globe, I have definitely come across um, a lot of things which absolutely I would really want to see into the Gambia. Um, some of the things are, I want to see the Gambia to be a very inclusive and participatory country or society wherein at least nobody will be discriminated against, especially persons with disabilities who have the same or equal fundamental rights and freedoms just like others. Um, the country should actually be inclusive in the sense that uh, the rights that are available for everybody will be accorded to persons with disabilities in terms of integration, in terms of provision of uh, facilities and equipment in terms of accessibility, for example, to public buildings or private buildings, accessibility in terms of any kind of information or facilities. Um, I would actually also want uh, persons with disabilities to be inclusive, let's say, into the system in all kinds of programs. For instance, education opportunities should be given to persons with disabilities, at least to excel. Um, we're talking of employment, for example, persons with disabilities, the large number of persons with disabilities in the Gambia are not actually given the opportunity of employment. We are talking of health and healthcare services, at least to persons with disabilities. We're talking of transportation that are actually very much difficult for persons with disabilities to access, at least to move from one place to the other. We're talking of habilitation and rehabilitation services at least for persons with disabilities, for instance, when a wheelchair user maybe actually has a problem with the wheelchair, 
unless there should be at least um, an established center in terms of rehabilitation that should help persons with disabilities to get this done. Um, we are talking of a lot, 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 lot of uh, opportunities or accessibilities in terms of persons uh, with disabilities. Um, it is actually established fact that uh, integrating persons with disabilities in the society is really um, an essential um, part of any government because a government who does not really have uh, facilities or who do, do not create accessibility for persons with disabilities definitely is not a successful government. Absolutely. Um, from the beginning of these panel discussions, we've been focusing on why elections are important, why elections are important for different groups of people from persons with disabilities to young women, elderly women, young men, elderly men. Uh, one thing I want to ask you is to you as a person with disability, why do you feel elections are important to you? What does voting mean to you? Voting absolutely is very important. For instance, I will first make reference to Section 39 of the Constitution of the Gambia that absolutely establishes you know, the right at least of an individual to vote and be voted for. This absolutely does not discriminate anybody. It even includes, let's say, persons with disabilities in general. If you look at Section 33 of the Constitution of the Gambia by which we are governed, it actually prohibits discrimination against any group of persons. So election is about giving person an opportunity to make a choice. And when you are making a choice, you are absolutely ordained to make right choice, but not a wrong choice. Especially in this context, an opportunity is given to you to participate in the election, to ensure that you choose your right leader or the right person who is going to lead you at least for a certain period of time. So obviously it is very important, the election I mean, at least by giving, giving an opportunity to an individual to ensure that you exercise your franchise. Because uh, um, I just want to talk general, but I always, always want to be specific in terms of according right to persons with disabilities, for example. Um, it is very much important, you know, as an individual, when you attain the age of majority, at least you go out and exercise at least your franchise. That is, make sure that you think, you do a critical thinking, choose a particular person of your choice, vote for him or her, because this individual whom you have voted for is really going to lead you for a long time or for a short time or whatsoever. But think of that person as an individual that will be able to make a difference in your life difference in the lives of the citizens of a country. So election is definitely very much important. That is the hallmark, that is a determinant, the litmus test for that individual, whether he or she will perform well to ensure that at least your country will progress or to ensure that your country will fail. So it is your election, your voter's card, that will give you that opportunity to determine which leader you're going to choose, whether that leader will perform to ensure that your country progresses or whether that leader will underperform to make sure that your country actually does not progress. So these are the reasons why Absolutely. elections are important. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you must have voted in a, the elections before in the past. Uh, so you have your experiences with the elections. Can you kindly share with us some of your experiences as a person with disability? Was it agreeable? Was it, what was the challenging part of your experiences? Well, the challenges, the challenging parts are definitely numerous. Um, I always compare the Gambia with many other countries where I've traveled before. Um, I know that, yes, I have casted my vote, at least to ensure that the Gambia really changes, you know, the Gambia really realizes at least a positive and progressive changes. But uh, for instance, if I may first make reference to the infrastructure in terms of feeder roads or in terms of highways, at least I feel that at least performance is not being done in order to at least bring um, construction in terms of highways or feeder road very good networks at least into um, a standard one in the Gambia. As I'm speaking to you, um, it is very much difficult for um, a non-person with disability 
talk less of a person with disability, to walk everywhere freely because mm. everyone is muddy, everyone is with pit holes, stagnant waters. Mm. It is indeed very much difficult. At least performance is not done in terms of that aspect. If you look at accessibility purpose, for instance, facilities are supposed to be installed, let's say, in places to allow the visually impaired or other persons with disabilities at least to have access mm. to both those private and public buildings. Mm. Whether the facility is going to be installed in audio format or in braille format, mm. or in order to have elevators or escalators mm. to allow other maybe um, physically um, challenged individuals, you know, is also lacking. You also think of other facilities and equipment that are supposed to be provided by the government to make sure that you know equal treatment for all is the end of the day is another thing. Job opportunities, I realize that in this country definitely jobs are not being created, you know, for people at least to be engaged to earn a living. This one absolutely applies across for both persons with disabilities and non-persons with disabilities as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like the capacity is not really, 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 you know, being. Um, introduced to create jobs, let's say for the youth, you know. Can, for can, can you that share with us? Sorry, not. Uh, we will we'll come back to this. Um, just hold that thought. Can you share with us your very own, one of your very own personal experiences going to the polling poll? What was one of the things that you felt really needed to change? A very personal experience when you were voting. Well, as a visually impaired, um, in terms of election, when going to cast your vote. Like we feel, for example, ballot boxes should be accessible in the sense that there need to be brill or tactile format that should be pasted on ballot box mm -hmm. where a visual impaired like me or any other person can quickly walk in mm -hmm. at least feel the ballot box, know that this is the color of the ballot box, mm -hmm. this is the name of this particular candidate that has been pasted on the ballot box that mm -hmm. will give you an opportunity mm -hmm. at least to vote for the right person. Because we're talking of secret voting, mm -hmm. so absolutely you need not engage a third party you know, into your voting yeah. process at least to know that this is what yeah. you voted for. Yeah. This is one of the challenges as a visual impaired. But in general, sorry to say, as I've said, sometimes the places where the pooling stations are and where ballot boxes are installed is not also accessible for the physically challenged. Challenge. Because sometimes if you come with your wheelchair, because mm. the way the boxes will be, the, you can't access the place. Yeah. They either maybe have to ensure that unless you give your Someone. marble to somebody to go and vote for your choice and mm. the person will be whether that person will vote for that choice, choice or not or is not. a question. Yeah. yeah, And sometimes the distances of where pooling stations Station, will be oh. and where other persons with disabilities are will not actually be convenient. So it will discourage them even to exercise their franchise to vote for their right mm. leader. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things we discussed here earlier, uh, before I move on to my very able-bodied gentleman here, one of the things that we discussed earlier was um, the fact that we all know that elections um, help us to elect a president that presides over the executive, um, significantly a cabinet that uh, creates policies and laws. Um, obviously, there are things uh, in the Constitution that um, cater to persons with disabilities, but in the case of the Gambia, for example, we know that enforcement is usually a problem. How, in your understanding, do you feel like persons with disabilities engage in voting at a national assembly election level? and local council election level, do you feel like persons with disabilities actually come out and turn out to vote in those elections as well or not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is really dependent on the convenience, whether the whole or the entire voting processes will be convenient for persons with disabilities. Um, if you look at the Constitution of the Gambia, 1997, by which we are governed in section 31, subsections 1, 2, and 3, it only talks about three things in terms of uh, um, rights of persons with disabilities. Disability. It only talks about the rights of persons with disabilities in terms of health, employment, and education. So the proviso to that one only states that in any judicial proceedings in which a person with disability is a party, then the procedures shall take into account his or her conditions. Um, I am happy to really announce here that uh, on Tuesday, 6 July 2021, the National Assembly members of the Gambia have unanimously passed Persons with Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. So the President of the Gambia, within the 30 days requirement, on the 25th July, has assented 
to that particular act. So meaning that likely now, persons with disabilities also have a guaranteed legislation mm. that we can rely upon in the event of any infringement or um, uh, encroachment of our rights. Right. So we can say now we are covered by a specific legislation. Okay. So we can always, you know, actually institute an action or a lawsuit for respect. Right promotion and protection of our fundamental rights and freedoms. And if you look at the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the Gambia is a signatory or is a party to that convention. The Gambia has signed or ratified that convention since 2015. And all the fundamental rights and freedoms that are contained in the UNCRPD, for example, Section 29 of UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, talk about the persons with disabilities' rights to participate in political activities and in public life. Yes, I was about to come to that. What, how do you feel about persons with disabilities being not only voting but participating in standing for elections and taking part in the electoral process? Well, I know that we do exercise our franchise in voting in presidential election, parliamentary election, council or mayoral election, we normally participate. Okay. But as yet, I have not yet seen any person with disability at least contesting for a particular position, either being an independent candidate or contesting at least on behalf of a political party. Would you so say this that is, is the, part of the dream that you want? It is. In fact, uh, uh, a lot of discussions have been going along. Since we know that our established rights to participate in political activities in political life as being guaranteed by status. For example, this current Persons with Disabilities Act, uh, we're talking of Section 55 that has clearly addressed that one. So as persons with disabilities, we will also think of putting up a candidate, whether we will speak to a political party or particular polit political parties to ensure that at least opportunity is given to us. Alternatively, we are going to put up an independent persons with disability at least to contest for a particular position, especially in terms of uh, parliamentary positions or councillor or mayoral position, because we feel that we are all equal before the law, we have equal rights and should enjoy equal rights and freedom like anybody in terms of taking part or participation in elections. Of course. Do you, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one more, throw one more question in your way before yes, I, yes. I move on. If possible. Do you feel the people that are currently in power are and can represent persons with disabilities more than or as much as a person with disability being in the hot seat themselves? Yeah, um, we always have this belief that we persons with disabilities should always be at the forefront in order to drive our agenda. Because we understand our own issues than anybody. Mm -hmm. We can explain our issues than anybody. Mm -hmm. We can enlighten and sensitize anybody. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Pertaining to our own issues or challenges or conditions. Mm -hmm. So obviously, opportunities should always be given to us mm -hmm. to stand at the forefront, mm -hmm. to sensitize people, mm -hmm. to drive our own agenda. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, if somebody also does it for you, may not actually be perfect or may not be um, really fitting you know, in the context of persons with disabilities. We're, we're, we're talking about um, the Gambian dream here. What do you think about a Gambia? What do you think about a Gambia where, let's say in the parliament, for example, you have women, you have men, you have persons with disabilities, you have every section represented there, but passed on to the national by the national assembly as a law that with every election there must be at least one or two persons with disability in the parliament women in the parliament whether it's whatever the, the representatives needed but must be there must be passed as law i must say you are very intelligent thank you sir um as you as as if you have in fact already read the draft constitution that have been currently killed in the parliament. That's the right perspective to use. Um, during the process of the draft constitution, persons with disabilities were consulted. At least at every stage, we have really advanced a lot of issues and rights that should be worthy of consideration in the draft constitution in the, in the event it becomes successful. 
And before they finalize the draft, we have actually um, done a position paper that should be considered you know, by the drafters to be included in the draft constitution for persons with disabilities. And goes so good, if you look at section 58 of that draft constitution, at least most of the rights that we have recommended for persons with disabilities were included. Most pertinent or prominent is, in this constitution, at least there should be two seats for persons with disabilities in the National Assembly, one man and one woman. Although it is unfortunate that the constitution um, was not successful, but even currently there has been $20,000 um, from the UNDP that should support these two seats for persons with disabilities if the constitution is going to be amended, and of course, I think the quota system for women. Okay. So this is why I say you are intelligent. Thank as you if you have read, or Thank maybe you. as if someone even must have told you Thank that you. at least it will be pertinent for persons with disabilities to have two seats in the National Assembly. Well, I, I, this will I, be the case. I, I do, I do yes. my, my research. Is, is Absolutely. Part of, and this will be the case, too. seriously. When, and we're going to come back to you. When we come back to you, we're going to go a little bit more into details as to some of the steps that can be taken to not only have laws passed, because it's one thing to have laws passed. There's another thing to have laws enforced. Absolutely. Understand? And strategic measures taken to oversee that whatever law is passed is enforced and enforced properly Absolutely. without corruption. But I'm, I'm going to move on to my poet. <laughs> how are you, sir? I'm good. How are yes, you? It's a pleasure once again to have you here. Thank you. Uh, poetry. Mm -hmm. I've been a poet myself. Um, a lot of people think, think we're, we're, we're lofty. When I say lofty, a lot of people think we don't really focus on factual things, mm -hmm. but we're very dreamy. We want good things, mm -hmm. you understand? Uh, the reason I'm making this point is I'm going to compare it to the state of our, our nation okay. right now. Um, we, we, we want to better our environments, to better our lives but we kind of have a, a sense of grandeur, understand, mm -hmm. which sometimes is hard to materialize in pragmatic ways. And sometimes I feel like our country is like one big poetry, mm -hmm. understand, in terms, in, 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 in situations where there are so many ideals, there are so many laws being passed, there are so many things being said, but they end up just being ideas, you know, and most of them end up just being, because we would say, for example, oh, look at what China has done. Look at what Singapore has done. Mm -hmm. We had election, uh, we had our independence almost the same time with Singapore. Mm -hmm. They were able to mobilize themselves. They were able to do this and that. And then we'll sit and we'll say, oh, but our problem is this. Oh, but our problem is that. And then 10 years later, we'll maybe raise up the same conversation again. Oh, look at what Singapore has done. As, as, as a poet, mm -hmm. What would you say is your perspective, right, mm -hmm. first and foremost, mm -hmm. on the challenges, the way you see it from a poetic mind? Um, I, <coughs> I think what, I, what would we have in this country um, for the past 50-something uh, years since we attained independence is we've had people in power who are incredible preachers right. but not practitioners, right? right? Um, if, if any of them stands and speak, you'd be like, yeah, this person has the greatest idea, but you put them in a place and say, fine, do it. They can't. And uh, poetry is incredible because what we do is we take things and paint them in a little bit exaggerated way, yeah. right? To, to, make, to, yeah, yeah. to make things beautiful, yeah. right? And, and, and this is good. But what we have is um, we're in a situation where we're in a competition of who can speak better. Something, this, this is what I'm saying, right? Uh, because the policies that they were advocating, for example, when independence happened, the reason we were fighting for independence was because we wanted to be able to sustain ourselves, to, yeah. to, to rule our people according to our own laws, yeah. right? to make our own plans and run our own affairs. Yeah. Of Over 30 years, one man did nothing. Another man said, this guy is horrible. He picked up a gun and kicked him out. Yeah. In 22 years, he couldn't do any better. Yeah. Right? We said we are tired. We voted him out. The other man we voted in, who promised to live after three years, he said he wouldn't. And then he, instead of just staying for five years, he, he decided to form a political party. He didn't stop there. He went and colluded with the same party that we said was a dictator. Do you understand? Now, I'm a law student, and, and the, the, for example, the APRC has every right to, 
to form a coalition with any other political party, legally yeah. speaking. Legal speaking. So the problem is not legal, it's moral. Moral, yes, right? of course. What kind of obligation do you owe to the people who brought you into power, power. in the name of saving them? Yeah. Right? Of so course. we have a lot of questions that are uninterrogated. Of course. Right? And so if you ask me how can I characterize that, I would say the problem is not the country. The problem is not that we don't have money or resources. The problem is the people. The we people. cannot fix this country unless we fix the people. How do you feel we should fix the people? I okay, wait. Let's hold. Let's 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 hold. Yes, let's hold that there because right now Possibly. we're 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 speaking of the challenges yes. before we go into the solutions. Solution. Yes. Um, I wanted to make uh, mention of something real quick. Mm -hmm. Politicians can be likened to poets in a way mm -hmm. because they say a lot of things. They do. You understand? They make things. Beautiful. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. Where do you say they missed the point? Obviously, without not practicalizing it. I think where they missed the point is this. I think where all of us missed the point, not just the politicians, because okay. we put them there with our votes yes, most of the time. Now, I'm not just talking about the president, but I'm talking about national assembly Assembly members, and local, council. know, local councils. We put them there. I, I was gonna come, you know, I was waiting for the question about the dream of the Gambia you wanna, and I was gonna, I was gonna come from this from a very technical and intellectual point of view, mm -hmm. right? That's there's, the lawyer side. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, that's the intellectual part of me. Okay. Um, there's this guy called Thich Nhat Hanh. He's a he's a Buddhist monk. He wrote this book called The Art of Living. The Art In the second chapter of The Art of Living, he talked about a concept he called interbeing. Yeah. Now, the concept of interbeing, according to Thich Nhat Hanh, is that none of us exist exclusively as individuals. We are extensions of yeah. of everyone else. I'm an extension sort of, of my like father. Einstein He's an extension of his great grandfather. Exactly. Yeah. So we are extensions of other people. Okay. He did not stop there. He talked about and explaining the concept of interbeing, he borrowed something from this French psychologist that he called, for example, take the country or the world as one big living organism. That is what it is. Because uh, the, the psychologist said the, it's like the human body, right? The human body is shared, rented, and occupied by different organisms. You have, you have blood, you have bone, you have tissue, you have muscle, you have flesh, you have, you know, brains. Mm. Anything you take out, the person dies. If any one of those organs has a problem, we say the person is sick, we take them to a hospital. Now, the, let's say the Gambia is a big living organism. Right? Who, who, what are the vital parts? What are the vital organs of this country? The human beings, the young people, mm -hmm. the economy, the laws, the schools. Mm -hmm. Now, if it is a human being, if let's say the heart fails or the heart has it, you take them to the hospital and you fix it. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have is, we have a country which is a big living organism. Now, we had a blood organism, which is the executive, which is sick. Instead of taking it to the hospital and fixing it, we have some people siding with it and defending its sickness. Mm -hmm. We cannot fix anything. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Right. So, this is where we are at, which is why if you talk about the problems, we will go round and round and round, but we will come back to the same point. The hamsters will. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah? So, the question is, how do we move from, let's form a coalition to free our people. Mm -hmm. So we are not doing three years anymore. Everybody's splitting up and doing what they wanted. Mm -hmm. So let's have okay, a... Now, now, now you're going to solutions. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the juicy part. We're going to get into the juicy part. Yeah, well, uh, I have, I have a, a, another one for you, another question for you. Okay. Um, again, politicians, mm -hmm. uh, the technicalities of... You mentioned something interesting mm -hmm. of intellect. You mentioned intellect. So, you know, the technicalities of intellect, uh, if, before I get into that, I'm going to use uh, Senegal, our neighboring country, Senegal, as an example. Mm -hmm. You see President Senghor. Mm -hmm. Everyone knew President Senghor to be an intellect, mm -hmm. right? And then you also mentioned uh, moral, you mm -hmm. understand? You have a situation where electing a leader, obviously there's a certain amount of intellect needed. Needed, of course. There's a certain amount of morality mm -hmm. needed, you mm -hmm. understand? How does one gauge how much intellect a person has, how much moral a person has, and the other necessary qualities? Mm -hmm. You understand? And how does how do the people aspire to learn how to elect mm -hmm. people based off the, the amount of intellect that they have, the amount of morale that they have, mm -hmm. you understand, the amount of whatever credential that is needed. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Because here, most of the time, electing leaders, mm -hmm. let me say, ele electing leaders are done, in, you know, by emotionally, mm -hmm. by tribe, mm -hmm. tribe, and there's so many, but people don't really focus on the fact that 
How intelligent is this person to lead us? So, so here, here is what I'll suggest. I think the greatest problem we have in this country is the issue of we don't have enough political consciousness among our people to be able to make certain decisions. We'll get to that Basically, point. one second. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, there's a criteria mm -hmm. that is um, created, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. If you do not have a certain level of intellect, mm -hmm. if you do not have a certain level of morality, just mm -hmm. like you said, fix your bed. Yes. You can't even... You can't even take part. You cannot run. Run. Right. You can't right. even be a candidate. Right. So, so let's let's get to the criteria first. We'll get that right. right. So first of all, this is what we need to do. We need to be able to put these politicians through a process that can that can actually sort them out. Yes. So first, to know what a person's criteria, what a person's morality is like, most, there's a there's an age limit. Corruption. You, yeah, yes. You have to you have to attain a certain age, mm -hmm. and you don't live under a rock mm -hmm. before you get to that age. Mm -hmm. So we can go back and check your traffic mm -hmm. to see what that is like, mm -hmm. right? And other thing is, uh, Omid, I don't know if you know this, but it is very easy to impress people with speech when no one is challenging it. Yes. When you're just given an opportunity to stand on a podium and speak freely, nobody is questioning or yeah. challenging what you're saying, yeah. it's easy to wow the crowd. Of course. Do you understand? I'm doing about this because it's what I do. Mm. I'm really good at it. Yeah. Now, the, the thing is, we need to put in a process that questions what these people do. Of course. Do you understand? For example, when a politician stands with a manifesto and talks about their policies and what they will do, mm -hmm. nobody asks them the step by step of how they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Did you watch the debate between Dr. Dr. C. 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 and Hanifa Salah? Yeah, At yeah. some point, that debate was very uncomfortable. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Because questions about what is the step by step execution strategy you have mm -hmm. for this plan mm -hmm. were asked. Yeah. And some people who came up with strategies could not defend them. Yeah. They could not explain step by step how so, they can achieve yeah, that. So, you know, this is where we find out who can fix their beds. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Because if you come and your bedroom is not fixed, mm -hmm. we will ask you questions and yeah. you will have to answer. Yeah. So we need to set in a process that will, for example, test that part. Yeah. That will that will that will not test the morality yeah. part, but it will take your technical know-how and or your intellect. I was about and, to actually yeah, say it will take your technical know-how of how yeah. you think you will you will produce the the, the, the results result. you say you will. Like I can come as a protester and say, if you vote me in within the first three years of my time, I will provide 300,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. How? And everybody will shout, yay! And this is our problem. Because nobody, 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 is nobody is questioning and challenging it. Right question. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. If you, how are you going to do it? We will have to introduce the free market. It's capitalism. Yeah. Nobody asks what capitalism is, yes. or what the free market is, yeah. or what are the conditions yeah. under which we will operate. Yeah. How will it work? Yeah. Maybe I can even provide the 300,000 yeah. jobs. Yeah. But at the cost of what? What, exactly. Do you understand? Exactly. So we need to put in a process that tests the intellect and technical know-how of these people, and we do not have that. Now, we now, now yeah. is, there, is there a way, and this, this is an open question, is yeah. there a way, again, that's similar to the question that I asked you about electing the right people. Obviously, we all need to vote mm -hmm. to get to that point. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. We all need to have a system of voting for people with a certain level of intellect, mm -hmm. people with a certain level of morality, morality. Mm -hmm. but we all as Gambians need to decide to create, to vote, to come up with a standard, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. A standard not only based on intellect or morale, but whatever we deem necessary. Mm -hmm. um, again, like for example, the issue of corruption, mm -hmm. you know, you really need to be able to test people to see how honest they yeah. are. So if anyone is going to stand as a candidate, there needs to be a system of actually testing them. You know what I mean? Mm. Testing their, their, and obviously looking into their past, looking into their, you know, obviously Previous them coming demons. up. Mm. But obviously people have skeletons in mm -hmm. their closets. Yes. You understand? Do. And when people get into a position of power, some of those skeletons come up because now they're in, in, a, in a place where you can't really do nothing about their bad habits. Exactly. Certain people are very good at hiding who they really are mm -hmm. until they're in a position of power. When they're in a position of power, who's going to tell them you can't be this person that you really were a long time ago, but you really hit that person until you're in this position? But that is why we have democracy. We're supposed to be able to tell them you cannot be this person in an office like that. Now, let me tell you this, Amit, uh, and, and I'm, you, I don't know, maybe you've heard it before. Power doesn't change anybody. It only yeah. reveals who you truly, who you are. truly are. Yeah. Do you understand? This is, this is the issue we have. And maybe we cannot have an entirely um, 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 corruption-proof uh, uh, process because we can, what we can do is we can try to minimize this as much as possible, but we cannot completely eliminate it. At some point, we, we, cannot, we cannot actually sort out ev through everything. But I think the issue is we have been electing so many bad leaders. This Our is, process this is, is flawed. Is the, problem. This is the, problem. the process is flawed. And I think it needs to be reviewed. We need to go through it again. And we have well, to. But we can only come uh, get to that by voting. No, 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 no. Not the voting. I, I don't mean only presidential. Not uh, the voting. Before we even reach at the voting level, mm -hmm. the people who are vying for these positions, mm -hmm. we need to put them through a process mm -hmm. that, will, that will minimize all of the problems we have the moment they get into power. Look, from from uh, your understanding, mm -hmm. is it possible to sack 
for the people to come together and decide to sack, let's say, a member of parliament. Yeah, the, the, a member of parliament can be sacked by his, by his people. He can be recalled. No, let's say if the people, mm -hmm. the, population, the population, are not is happy <laughs> with, with maybe the performance, yes, of a member of parliament. The members of his constituency yeah. can recall him. Right. Yes, there's a process for that. And the president, even the president can be kicked, by a vo kicked out by, by a vote of confidence. Of, co of, of course. You understand? So, well, but, come on, <laughs> That, that is more, again, to listen back to the loftiness. Political is consciousness. Very practical? The people, look, I think the only way, the only way we change the in country is... In world, it's not very practical. No, no, it's it? actually, it could be practical, but I think we will have to do a better look at work. Some, was it uh, the president of France who stepped down after, um, no, it wasn't Sarkozy, uh, who, South Africa, you mean? No, France, 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 France after yeah. the situation that happened, yes. he, he willingly stepped, stepped down. down. Oh, it's Africa, they're not going to do that. This is, what I, this is what I mean. Imagine yeah. people who, how can you kick out people who already have this mentality that this is my inheritance I, from yeah, the gods. No, no, um, <laughs> I, I think that is similar to that of Atabu mm. some times ago. Mm. I think there were a lot of um, uh, oppressions going against Mugabe. Mm -hmm. So I think he was definitely aligning himself with Mugabe, not mm -hmm. listening to the Western ideas mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But then I think, if I'm right, when you know, he knew that they were just about to impeach him, or I think he resigned, mm -hmm. Tabo Mbeki as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. He also did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't forget, like, I've been to South Africa. A, co a country like, like South Africa, yeah. um, obviously after apartheid, uh, uh, apartheid. apartheid yeah. There's been there's been a mix of ideals that are you know I, I like the Africans is Dutch yeah, and yeah. so there's a lot of European ideals mixed sure. with so obviously the culture of resigning mm. shouldn't be that so much of a foreign thing to them you absolutely, know compared absolutely, yeah. to. Areas like West Africa, like where the Gambia, yes, <laughs> like the Gambia, Gambia. Oh, you don't understand where yeah. you know we live by the sword, Something literally like not a sword. Again, I'm being poetic here. Yeah, yeah. But where we live by the iron fist, in yeah. a way, you understand where we feel like once we're in a position of power, all these little mini me's don't really matter. But the little mini me's are the ones that put them. I think I think the, the problem I think the problem we have is um, the, the past regime perpetrated a system with such brute force that even though it is out that system is still persistent still, mm. and the people in power, right? Um, but this is why it's important for us to have these discussions yeah, now. They are still operating by the same model. I'm not, I'm not joking. Um, if there are certain, we just have a few such circumstances that we have to put in place. We just have a, every, a few things are clicking into place. Uh, if, if we have a few more things in place, Baro is probably going to be worse than Yair Jami. Yes. Do you understand? Because he has been testing the waters mm. and he is getting away with a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things. This is, this is how the previous one started. He did not start by going, okay, let's shoot somebody, yeah. let's lock this person yeah. down. No, it started yeah. small. Seeing what he could get Let's fire someone and say what they're going to say. Yeah. Okay, yeah. nobody said anything. Yeah. Lock this one up for five months, no trial. Let's yeah. see. Nobody yeah. did anything. Yeah. Okay, slaughter them. This is why I, 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 I'm very, um, let's say, inspired by CSOs like um, Gambia Participate. Yeah. For actually going out, suing some of these people. Challenging the system. Challenging the system. Yes. You understand? System. And we need more CSOs like that. You know, um, studio houses like Sahel that mm -hmm. are actually bringing you uncut information. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? against like whatever is wrong because um we spoke earlier about biases mm -hmm. we had a, a young lady here Kelly, who uh, has a, a show mm -hmm. there, about the ballot and everything and she mentioned how there are journalists for example that take sides when it comes to political rallies and mm -hmm. campaigns mm -hmm. just as how we're talking about cases where there should be a standard mm -hmm. for politicians instead technical know-how, morality, right. you know, and so, so, and so. so, so, so forth, yeah. For journalists as well, there should, even if you're going to take an oath, I believe journalists do take an oath mm -hmm. that you cannot break, you understand? Mm -hmm. To be impartial to certain things. Oh, no, bad stuff. You, you understand yeah. what I'm trying yeah. to say? But, but, I feel the challenge we're facing at the moment, I mean, not everything about our politics is bad, no. The reason why we're having these discussions is not because, oh, we're running with our woes, a hundred percent of the time. No, we, we're, we, it's a progressive Gambia. Obviously, we're coming from a, di a dictatorship, mm -hmm. but we Gambians, we all know what we want now. And what we want is the Gambia that we do, did not want. Exactly. <laughs> you understand? This is what we want. Yeah. The Gambia that we did not want, yeah. that we fought so hard. Wow. And we don't want to go back to that Gambia. 
And it's good that with democracy, a lot of conversations are taking place. You know, a lot of initiatives are coming up, but we don't need to relent. And one of the things that we cannot relent on is voting. The power and the importance of voting the right people into power, whether at a presidential level, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. national mm -hmm. election level. Mm -hmm. And this is the conversation that we want to share with all our mm -hmm. Gambian brothers and sisters. The importance of voting, 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 learning, researching the right people to vote for, people with the technical know-how, people with the intellectual capacity, people with the moral balance. In fact, not even moral balance, with the moral surplus, <laughs> you understand, to be able to, 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 to run this, 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 this country properly. Okay, um, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and delve into details with the solutions. Okay. Right. Democracy. Democracy.